Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is your editor, Christopher Aaron. It is December 1st, 2022. Here on the iGold channel, we are going to have a critical gold price update. I am not even joking. The point where gold is at this moment as we head into the overnight session Thursday morning is make or break for gold and the entire precious metals complex. And if it holds a key level here, the reversion potential in this sector, which has been so beaten down and so unloved for the last two years, has the potential to be truly life-altering. So please look at the information that I'm presenting to you, make your own decision, and be wise about this. Make sure to hit the red subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified when these videos come out. And make sure to follow our Twitter feed at iGlobalGold for more frequent updates. Legal disclaimer, and we go. Now, here's the price of gold for the last four and a half years. The most important technical trend that we've been following in this market since the 2018 low, just above 11.75 per ounce, began right at the bottom. And you start to form two points here and you say, hey, is there a trend that we can notice where buyers are emerging? Let's imagine at higher and higher intervals as time goes on. And of course, we know it only takes two points to make a line. And so we start with the first two points. And then we say, wow, interesting. So a few weeks later, there's a third point on that line. And then several months later, are you serious? A fourth point just from the first two? We just extend that out? And then the market got super away from itself. And everyone thought this line would not be important at all You know, when gold was above 2,000 per ounce. But then we just fast forward a couple years and we see, wait a minute, the market respected this that goes all the way back four years prior? Isn't that amazing? And then what? A breakdown or an apparent breakdown. Hmm. Let's continue on with this narrative, shall we? The line as it currently stands of rising support for gold comes in at $1,770 in the spot market. There can sometimes be slight differences, a couple dollars or so between spot and the futures market. We're talking about spot here. Right now, Thursday morning in Asia, gold is trading at 1775 and has recaptured a breakdown of a four and a half year trend. Absolutely mission critical for everything related to gold. Gold, the gold miners, silver, the silver miners, the silver streamers, everything. What happens right here to physical gold itself? Everything is dependent on this. 1770, line in the sand, currently above it. And then we say, hmm, was there anything happening here from the, the top side as gold was kind of moving lower, grinding lower through the recent data points here? Is there any sort of trend that we can observe from a lot of these points? And it's not quite as clear as the trend that began at this major low. But if we start to take a best fit, a best fit of a lot of the data points here, not at precisely the high, but a lot of the subsequent reaction highs from 2020 and we say well this is starting to look like something in there that the market was respecting as far as when did the sellers show up and then we see okay this is starting to get solidified here a fourth attempt definitely this is where the sellers are showing up okay fifth attempt that is absolutely clearly where the sellers are showing up and then something a bit odd here happens you have this false breakout on the Russia war premium, the invasion of Ukraine. And we can see in retrospect that it was false. It failed. But then look what happens after the failure. Boom. Are you serious? Right back to this best fit downward trend of sellers. What is that? A sixth time? And then boom, look at this. 
little wick right there a seventh time. So right now, this best fit of downward pressure is actually within $10 matching with the former rising support structure. And so gold on the five-year chart is sandwiched. Can you see this small little green triangle here? Gold is sandwiched above this key support trying to negate a five-year trend breakdown and below key resistance. This is absolutely make or break moment for gold here. So the way that the chart stands right now, the bias is with the existing breakdown until proven otherwise. So the bias must be as follows, that gold will grind here for another week or two, maybe make a couple brief blips above 1780, but fail to hold it on weekly closes. We're talking about needing at least two weekly closes to negate the 1780 best fit downtrend. And then gold would be expected to round over after that. This is the bias. We're going to call this scenario A for the chart as it stands now. Aha, here's where it gets really interesting. If gold can just show us something like this in the orange, orange for your attention according to the color key, if gold can just give us a couple of weekly closes above 1780, let's say we consolidate above 1785, 1790, maybe even a weekly close above 1800 for good measure, what sets up is similar to what happened here on the upper side, which was a false breakout. And you can see how catastrophic false breakouts are because then the market tends to really sell off after that. So what would be setting up here, if we can get two weekly closes above 1780, would be turning this into a false breakdown, which would be very bullish. And following a false breakdown, gold would be expected to behave like this. And just between you and I, this is as far as we can take the chart back up to the former all-time high, 2,074 per ounce. But I will tell you secretly ahead of time that probably not on the third time, but probably the fourth attempt here, we'll see gold break out. This all hinges upon gold eclipsing 1780 on two weekly closes. It is right there. It's knock, knock, knocking at heaven's door. To use the song, which I happen to prefer, the version by uh, Guns N' Roses, but either way, it is knocking. Knock, knocking. So, if you understand what I'm saying here, that we are $5 away from reversing this major break down. And so you're saying to yourself, well, okay, gold's at 1775. So let's say we get that scenario B, turn that into a false breakdown. What is the reversion potential here? Well, for physical gold, 1775 back up to 2074 is a 17% gain. Nothing wrong with that be very pleasing for a lot of people to have that, especially with the way the general markets have performed recently. But let's be honest, very few people are going to call it quits, going to retire, going to, let's say, take a year off and live on the beach somewhere. Very few people are going to do that with a 17% move in the price of bullion, even though from a technical perspective, that would be very nice to have that false breakdown and see the reversion back up to the former all-time highs, right? But it's really not gonna change very many people's lives. Okay, let's say you agree. Let's say gold proves to us that it's just registered a false breakdown. And you say, well, I want a little bit more leverage in this sector. Maybe you take a look at the senior gold miners. There is a fund, the GDX fund, it's perfectly fine. GDX from the recent high when gold hit its 2074 peak from where it is right now would have to advance 58 percent 
a little bit better. It's almost a three for one leverage compared to physical Boolean. Not bad, right? Yeah, not bad. But still, I would argue with you that unless you've got millions that you're putting into the GDX itself, probably not going to change your trajectory as a human being, probably not going to open up more doors for freedom, for living wherever you want, for let's say getting a second passport or buying a second home somewhere. Okay, let's say the thesis that gold is going to get back to its 2020 peak. It's only 17% away. We're looking at the possibility of a false breakdown with gold needing to be above 1780. It's right there. It's knocking at the door. Let's say that might happen. What if you're someone like me who studies this sector every single day for the last 15 years and you know about certain unloved junior gold miners? And let's just say you're not taking a dart and throwing it at a board and hoping that one of the 2,000 junior gold miners out there are actually legitimate and not scams, not going to run away with your money and not do anything. And trust me, that has happened to everyone in this sector at some point. But let's say you do all your research and you narrow it down to a list of legitimate companies. You speak to the management, you do your research, maybe you go visit the mines, maybe you purchase some research on the companies. And let's say the company has a million ounces of gold in the ground, so it's not a fly-by-night operation. They're sitting on a known resource. You could check that off. And let's say the company also has not excessively diluted their share structure. They haven't gone out and issued 500 million shares and just blown that money to smithereens over the last five years. Okay, you do your research. Let's say you know that. Oh, and let's say also that company is in a politically safe jurisdiction like Nevada. Are you kidding me? The state motto is the silver state. They're that pro mining in Nevada. And you say, okay, wow, we have three things adding up here. And what's the one thing that doesn't add up? It's the irrational market valuation for where this company is trading right now versus where it should be trading. If gold in, is indeed going to prove a false breakdown and get back to the 2020 peaks. And you say, my goodness, we have this lined up as well. And so if this company, which has a million ounces of gold in the ground, which it does, has not excessively diluted their share structure, is sitting in a politically safe jurisdiction in Nevada, and the market is irrationally valuing this, and if this company goes back to where it was at the 2016 peak, you'd be looking at a 1,233% return. Wait a minute. You start to connect some dots here. And then for those who are doubting that this is possible, all you do is you look back at the history of this very own company. The last time we had a major bottom in this sector when the sentiment was so bummed out and no one wanted to talk about precious metals. And everyone was convinced that when the Fed hiked interest rates in 2015, gold was going to fall back below $1,000 per ounce. And everyone was wrong because gold actually bottomed the moment that the Fed hiked interest rates. And that caused what? The exact same return potential here back in the actual history of this same unloved junior gold miner. And so the point being, indeed, this has happened before in the past. Indeed, this can happen again if you know which companies you are looking at and you've done your research. So takeaways on the gold market right now. Look, gold is very close to proving that its recent breakdown is going to be reversed. It's very close. 1780 is the trigger level on dual weekly closes. So Think very carefully about the reward and the risk potential that is available in this sector. Think about how it fits in with your life, where you are as an individual and as an investor. That is the first takeaway. Second takeaway is that if your situation lines up, understand this. Many of the junior gold miners are currently priced as if gold was trading at 1,200 per ounce. 
It is not. It's trading at 1,775, and it is threatening to recover from a false breakdown, which would be extremely bullish. And so if gold proves the junior gold miners wrong here, there are life-altering reversion potentials that lie smack ahead. Do not be one of the people that waits until gold is back up at $2,074 per ounce, the all-time high, and then says, oh, now I'll get involved in this. That is what most people do. That's why the majority of the people that I work with, unfortunately, come to me once gold has already had its move. And there's not a whole lot I can tell them at that point other than keep following the market with us for the next several years and you'll find the moment when gold actually is unloved. And this is one of those moments. That junior gold miner is on our watch list. And if we get the recovery here in gold above 1780 in the spot market, then that buy signal is going out to Precious Metals Intelligence Plus subscribers. Look, it'd be great for me to say, hey, physical metal investors, look, you're going to be making 17% here. That's fantastic. But it's not 1,233%. And that's where you change your life. That's where you say, you know what? Screw this job. I'm done with it. I'm moving my family to uh, the Caribbean somewhere. We're going to have fun for the next three years. Or I'm buying a second home so I can get away from my state when I need to for political reasons in case they try to do another one of those damn lockdowns again and try to hold us hostage in our own homes. You say, hey, thanks, government. I'm driving to my second home where it's a little bit more free right now. That's what I'm about. I want people to have the potential to change their lives, but you have to understand risk versus reward. That 1,233% potential on Junior Gold Miner X, remember this, you will nearly double that even if you make these investments via private placement. Because with companies like that, if you buy by private placement, you also get these free warrants. And the free warrants get you nearly twice the upside, simply depending on the exact strike price of the warrant. Sometimes the strike price is only 35% higher than the current trading price. You get pretty close to twice the upside when these things really take off. This is for higher net worth investors. Really think about this. Minimum investment is $10,000 Canadian on each investment in the private placements. Remember, you will also get a free subscription to our general service, Precious Metals Intelligence Plus. If you would like to work with me one-on-one -on -one to strategize about your situation, if gold, in fact, recovers, I suggest that you book now because what tends to happen is we get these moves higher. As I said just a moment ago, everyone chases the move higher. I have the luxury here where I do not work another job. I'm a full-time analyst and a full-time investor. And so I follow this market every day. I converse with companies. I converse with colleagues. I attend trade shows. I speak at trade shows. So I simply offer to you my independent, no one pays me aside from my subscribers. None of the companies, none of the Boolean dealerships, nobody. I work for you to make sure that you have an independent research perspective on this sector. Think about it, guys. One way or another, think about it. Maybe it's not for you. Maybe you're getting closer to retirement and you need to be very conservative. Fine, nothing with that bless you. I wish you well in your retirement. Keep it conservative. Maybe you still have a few years before you retire. You're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, even in your 50s. And you're saying, look, I want to take a few thousand bucks. I want to take X, Y, or Z funds that I have sitting on the side and try to hit not just a home run, but a grand slam. 
That's where this comes into play. The potential is there. It's happened again. It will happen one of these days. It's simply a question, is it now or is it going to be a little bit in the future? We'll be following this very closely over the next few weeks. The line in the sand, 1780. Thank you. Take care of yourself.